Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the one hour chart of silver on netdania.com. You can click on the link below. I've drawn a number of things in here, and uh, what we talked about last time was follow through. Uh, I was expecting follow through tonight, but again, we have the very important 2 to 3 a.m. window. We also have tomorrow morning. So you can see there's pretty much only two directions, I guess as there always is two directions, up or down. Um, the lines are pretty clear. We have a trend line here that is still intact, but we also have a, a very classical type of head and shoulders top formation forming. We've got the really big volume spike that we've already talked about, uh, and we've also got a uh, MACD trend line, you can see that uh, we've got a series of um, higher lows on the MACD. And you can see right here the MACD is reset and it's prepared to uh, rally up above the zero line. It's definitely reset. It is not reset as low, but that's something you'd expect to see in a bull market. So where are we going to go? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, definitely tomorrow's going to be interesting action. Now, I want to talk about this Saudi Arabia story. This is a big story. It goes very, very deep. I'm going to try to touch upon some things that no one's really covered and uh, give you my take on the whole thing. Before we do that, let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin. You can see this is the Bitfinex chart, and uh, Bitfinex is trading at about 461. Uh, the pennant formation in Bitcoin is, is really obvious. We'll try to draw the lines in here. It's not easy, but uh, we'll try. And you can see, uh, the pennant goes from this 504 price, and that's definitely not, that. that's a 50% retracement there, but that's the most recent rally point. I can't seem to get this uh, drawn in. But uh, if, if I do get this drawn in, you'll see that it drops down from this point, that ah, didn't go, uh, from that point down to here. And uh, we, we are outside of the old pennant, but the way that works is that uh, the pennant can just become longer and longer and longer as we uh, rally and fail and rally and fail. Now this, this is forming into a new lengthened pennant, but you can see the length of this pennant here is, is from November all the way to now. So it's like a six month pennant formation. If you draw it all the way back from August, it's approaching a one year. Um, a 162 low on Bitfinex, you, you were lucky to get that. I don't think anybody got that. but um, So very strong rally going on. Litecoin, of course, that I have um, more, well, roughly the same Litecoin as I do Bitcoin probably. But you can see that Litecoin had a, a really big rally compared to Bitcoin. You can see that Litecoin hit uh, $8.65 back in July, whereas uh, that was not uh, a new high for Bitcoin, not at all. So uh, kind of like the gold-silver ratio, Bitcoin is gold, Litecoin is silver. Uh, they fluctuate. If you if you really want to look at the ratios, you can. I would suggest you use the Huobi, uh, Actually, no, that's not the one. You want to use a LTC BTC. It's hard to find one that's valid. Let's use the Chinese one here. And so you can see that on a long-term basis, the, the Litecoin Bitcoin uh, price is very, very depressed. You can see that at one point, Litecoin was actually 3% of Bitcoin. So a long way to go for the uh, crypto silver, we'll call it. So let's get to this Saudi story. And uh, I'm going to do a summary here to try to explain to you what this story is about. It's I haven't gone into it that deeply because 
the news is so disingenuous and nonsensical. But the and this actually goes back to 2003, so it's actually a 13-year-old story. But there's this hidden 28 pages, supposedly, of the 911 report. And uh, it supposedly documents foreign government involvement in 911. And uh, the U.S., basically the bottom line of the story is that the U.S. is threatening to release... Uh, this story, and they're also threatening to allow the families of 911 to sue foreign governments. And uh, really, the whole thing is just silly. And I'm I'm going to explain to you why it's silly. So let's. If, if I haven't been the most diligent researcher of 911, um, for me, it was uh, clearly a false flag. It was. I started to see false flags all the way back with Waco and, and the Oklahoma City bombing, things like that. When 911 happened, it was just, for me, it was laughable, honestly. Um, from the very beginning, it was a joke. But for those of you who don't just intuitively agree with that, uh, these are the two things that I would offer. Um, for the amount of research that I did, uh, the two most convincing things that I've seen so far, and I think if you watch them through, you're going to find that they're convincing as well. The first one is September Clues. And uh, September Clues, just to give you a rough summary of what September Clues is about, September Clues is a person who went and collected the VHS videotapes of the news reports the live news reports of the planes hitting the towers. And if you watch the video, follow the analysis, and just look at it for yourself with your own eyes, looking at the VHS video. Now, if you remember, the reason why they had to pull the VHS video, they had to actually solicit people who had recorded on their VCRs the live transmissions, was that the news media organizations have altered their archive data. So we're already in this Orwellian uh, revision of history. But you can't alter recordings, VHS recordings of the live broadcasts. And there were plenty of people who actually had their VHS recorders running when this thing happened. And they recorded it. The, the tapes have been collected, collated, compared... And you'll find that when you look at the analysis of the planes, um, and if, if you have to remember, the, the story was that these, whatever they were, a number of hijackers supposedly uh, used box cutters and hijacked these U.S. flights. And, uh, you know, you have a, a passport found at the bottom of the tower. and Just a whole bunch of stupidity, really more ridiculous and stupid than the moon landing hoax. Uh, just a ridiculous and stupid story, including the Pentagon and all the rest of it. But the point is that this video, more than any other, documents how this was a media hoax. So 911 was not just a false flag. Now, the definition of a false flag is when a sovereign power uh, creates a situation where they seem to be attacked by a foreign enemy, and that's a justification to go to war. Uh, many people have documented that probably the majority, if not every war the U.S. has been involved in in the 20th century, and perhaps even Every war the U.S. has ever been involved in has been based on a false flag. Uh, it's a situation where they create a fake attack by an enemy they want to attack, and then they go and attack them. So, uh, 911 in my mind was both a false flag and a hoax. Now, September Clues shows you that it was a hoax. That uh, it what they say, the scenario they gave didn't really occur. Now, the second most important video on this topic for me is the Dr. Judy Wood information. You can just type in the word dustification and Dr. Judy Wood. There's 
a huge number of videos out there. But basically, if you re-watch The Falling of the Towers and you watch this video and, and look at the information presented, you will come to the conclusion, it's unavoidable, that the towers were literally dustified. So we don't know how. Uh, we don't know what the technology was. But uh, we also had molten metal at the base of the towers that went on for months, etc. But whatever it was, it was something no one had seen before. Uh, it was not a controlled demolition in the same sense that we see controlled demolitions on uh, typical buildings. It was a dustification. And you can actually see in this video and many others that the towers themselves, the concrete and the metal of the towers, turned into dust as they were falling to the ground. So you put these two together, the September Clues information and the Judy Wood information, and then you think about the fact that NORAD had a stand-down order. You look at Bush and Warren Buffett off at Air Force Base. You look at all the other factors, and it's impossible for me to not conclude uh, that this was a false flag hoax. Now, what was the purpose of it? Well, the purpose of it was to justify war. And that's exactly what resulted. We know what happened. Uh, there was an immediate attack against Afghanistan. And then there was a later attack against Iraq. And then we have the, uh, the series of neocon attacks against various countries throughout the Middle East. Uh, and so the big question is, why do this? What's behind this? Well, I think we're now seeing this with this uh, Saudi Arabian story. So now I want to take you over to the FOFOA blog because this is something that no one is really talking about when they're talking about Saudi Arabia. Now, if you understand FOA and FOFOA. I'm not going to go into the free gold thing and, and how I think he's a shill and how he's anti-silver and all the rest of this, but I'm just going to refresh you on who FOA is and who FOFOA is. So FOA was a guy who wrote a series of threads, and this is the one, I'll link it for you on usagold.com, Another Thoughts. And you can see these appeared in the late 90s, roughly from October 97 through September 98. And it talked about a trade where the Saudis and others, OPEC nations, were secretly requiring exports of gold from the LBMA to uh, secure their positions. So... We need to think about this to try to understand this in context of what's happening. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of the petrodollar system, which was the end of the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1971 when Nixon closed the gold window. Uh, Henry Kissinger came up with a scheme called the petrodollar, and the idea was to create a backing for the dollar that was not based on gold because the U.S. no longer had enough gold uh, to export and cover uh, a gold-backed dollar. That was proven by Charles de Gaulle sending a ship to New York Harbor and requesting his gold and being refused with Nixon slamming the gold window closed. So the alternative was to find a different backing for the dollar, and that was the creation of the petrodollar. The idea behind this scheme was to... Uh, take the most important commodity in the world and make it so that the producers of that commodity only accepted dollars as payment. And all the bourses, uh, well, we have uh, North Sea Brent, but all the bourses except for the United States and England were effectively shut down, had to trade only in the dollar. So that's the basis of the petrodollar. Now, um, what does that do? Well, it creates this thing called petrodollar recycling. And this is how we get to the FOA and FOFOA information. So the OPEC nations have come to an agreement to work with the United States and uh, recycle uh, their oil profits back into dollars. So 
The initial way they could do that, of course, and this is what we're seeing with the Saudi story, is the Saudi threat to dump $750 billion worth of treasuries. And uh, the, the Saudis have been known for a long time for owning large shares of uh, New York Stock Exchange stocks. If you think about it rationally, it makes perfect sense. If the Saudis are getting dollars for their oil, what do they do with their dollars? The only thing you can do with a dollar is buy something that's sold in dollars. And for the amount of dollars that we're talking about, then we're talking about either U.S. treasuries, U.S. stocks, or then a conversion maybe to British stocks or British uh, treasuries. But primarily, we're talking about U.S. treasuries and U.S. stocks. Now, the FOA and FOFA thesis is based on the idea that the Saudis did not really trust uh, the Americans, and with good reason, uh, we'll see. So although the Saudis amassed a very, very large quantity of U.S. stocks and U.S. bonds, uh, FOA contends that they also required a backdoor export of physical gold into their country so that they could be guaranteed that they basically it's a requirement that they won't be betrayed by the Americans and the British. Now if they are trying to prevent themselves from being betrayed by the Americans and the British then if they buy physical gold with their dollars that they're getting for the oil they're selling and they store that gold in London or in New York or in Chicago, then it's just as easy to betray them by seizing that gold. So it makes sense that the OPEC nations and the Saudis primarily would require that the physical gold, whether or not it's in open or in secret, be shipped there to the country and stored there. So... This brings us to the modern day when we've had a series of wars through the Middle East and also you could use the Ukraine as an example with the planes apparently flown in and the gold loaded up and flown out. So uh, the best example I can come up with is Libya and uh, the United States very clearly in my mind and in many uh, alternative media people's minds, uh, very clearly the United States orchestrated the overthrow of Gaddafi in Libya who was trying to create a gold-backed dinar which would be an African currency that all the nations could trade. And apparently when that overthrow took place they went in, they seized the gold, they flew it out of the country. So this is the dynamic you have to keep in mind. If the Saudis decided that they couldn't trust the U.S. to honor their commitments and keep the value of their stocks and their bonds and be willing to repay them when they requested it and they decided to do a secret backdoor trade and get gold for their dollars, then that would make them vulnerable in the very same way that the Libyans, the Egyptians, the Ukrainians, and all the rest of the countries that decide to get the gold shipped there and store it locally. It's the same story that you're facing if you're looking at stacking physical silver and gold. Uh, do you buy a paper ETF? Well, no, they can steal that. Do you buy a storage overseas well that could be seized do you put it in a bank safe deposit box well they could change the rules or do you physically store it at your location or a location that you only know uh, that only you know exists and is hidden from everyone else well that's sort of the strategy that uh, is alleged that uh, the saudis used under the foa analysis. So the big question is, is this uh, a time now where the United States is trying to foment a war with Saudi Arabia to create regime change and potentially go in and seize all of the gold that is physically stored in Saudi Arabia? So you have to remember that your ability to store physical gold and keep it there is really only based on your military that you have. 
What's the military in Saudi Arabia? I think I saw today the number of bases, U.S. bases that are in Saudi Arabia is five. But we know the U.S. has hundreds of bases around the world. So the question is, are they preparing regime change in Saudi Arabia? I think that's the answer to what's going on. Now, I think most of the mainstream analysts who've looked at this story don't understand, first of all, number one, that the 911 story is a complete hoax. And uh, to me, it's an obvious hoax, an obvious false flag, an obvious hoax. And instead of the Saudis saying, we're going to expose this as a hoax and do a WikiLeaks, they basically threatened to sell treasuries. Um, so it looks like the, the U.S. and the neocons have decided that instead of going after Iran, they're actually going to betray Saudi Arabia and try for regime change in Saudi Arabia and not only seize all the FOFOA gold, but also seize the oil wells. That's my best take on the situation. So let's get over to a buy here that I think is really important. This is one that I just found today. And uh, a lot of people on the member site have talked about the two ounce uh, Lunar Monkey. And this is the first time I've seen it available on Gainesville. Uh, clearly, we're looking for a smackdown in silver because Pretty much we want to buy the dips, but uh, that may or may not be coming. I encourage everyone to watch very, very carefully tonight on around 2 or 3 a.m. when the Chinese market becomes very active. Uh, Gainesville is hedged, so the prices will change. And uh, also watch very early tomorrow morning on the Comex Open if we get a big dollar or dollar fifty drop, you might see a dollar or dollar fifty drop in this coin. So we're looking at forty six ninety two. Now with a roughly seventeen dollar silver price, well, we're talking about a six dollar seven dollar premium on the coin. Not that bad. Uh, what we have left here is about three hundred and seventy six of these coins. I personally don't have a lot of dry powder. Was very tempted to hide this information from the members but uh, I don't think they're going to last so this is the best deal I've seen in quite some time uh, to be able to pick up this two ounce monkey for 47 bucks uh, this is going to be a um, definite buy for the members uh, I hope there are some left for me when I do have dry powder but it doesn't matter uh, I think that uh, as I pointed out in the last two ounce uh, lunar series video that i did that uh you know they go over a hundred dollars very very soon uh if not you know eighty dollars by the next year so 46.92 for me is a buy that you cannot pass up on this two ounce lunar coin so back to the main story i really honestly my honest opinion i think that we are looking at the United States probably running their last game they can they can probably run and that's a betrayal of Saudi Arabia a potential war where uh, that regime is overthrown in a coup and the oil the oil fields and the gold that they've taken delivery of and I suspect that FOA is probably correct that they have actually taken quite a large amount of gold as delivery and is physically held in Saudi Arabia. So if the U.S. could create a situation where they release some phony intelligence proving, and they already had, you know, the, the whatever, 26 pilots, box cutters and all that nonsense, uh, they already had the Saudis kind of agree to being blamed in the first place it looks like they're going to flip it blame the saudis come in overthrow the regime steal all the oil and steal all the gold to keep this uh, petrodollar scheme running and we'll talk to you next time